Hey, it's Natasha with soldbynat.com, associate broker, home selling, and construction specialist in Georgia. But wait, this is actually going on my Nat Knows Real Estate and Stuff channel, so let me do that again. Hey, I think I do the same intro. I, I think I need to work on coming up with an intro for Nat Knows. So yeah, that's, that's the intro that you're gonna get. But hey guys, I was actually sitting in traffic and traffic had started to move, but I'm like, I'm gonna record a video, especially because I actually have a reason why I'm going to record this video. I just left a closing. And not just any closing, this was a very, very special closing. Wait, hold on. Can we, let me not neglect to call out how new new I look. Yes, so I look new new. Guys, I have loved this hairstyle on other people. I loved. And I was like, you know, watching YouTube. Watching YouTube. Love me some YouTube. I was like, I'm gonna try that. And I did it myself. Thank you. I'm gonna pat myself on the back because I think I did a good job. Um, but yeah, just just having some fun with some different styles and looks. Uh, but yes, I'm actually headed to New York this week. So back to what I was saying. I actually just left a closing, very special closing. So these clients, I, they first reached out to me in 2015 to rent a property and they rented for a few years. Then they contacted me in 2019 to buy their first home. So they purchased their new construction home and they lived in there 2019, 2021, 2023, almost three years in their new in their home and then they contacted me this year 2022 to sell that home they said they wanted to relocate they said it was going to be the time and they wanted to go ahead and, and make that decision they since had a, a little one uh, so i just feel like we've known each other for a long time they don't even feel like just clients i feel like we actually feel like they're my friends right but we met in real estate and that's one of the blessings of the things that can come out of real estate every transaction is not going to be like that everybody you work with is not going to be like that but you will have some people that you work with and you just really have a good connection and a bond with them so yes we just left closing congratulations to them the seller was sweet the agent um, was great as well and the the, the sorry the buyers were sweet and the buyer reminded me she was like do you remember when I called you and I was like you, you sure did she called me checking on the house and I told her um, I asked her if she had an agent if she's represented and she and I was like yeah just have your agent go ahead and schedule and go see the property and he actually did and he actually closed which I, I laugh to myself because normally when people who have an agent call you, I'm like, yeah, look at that, they rogue. So these are rogue buyers. Why are you out here doing searches for yourself and calling on property yourself? And if you haven't seen videos that I've done on rogue buyers and flaky buyers, check on them. But this panned out. Her agent actually did call me. Uh, her agent was actually her cousin. Um, and it, it all worked out. And agent, stay tuned to the end because this really could have went left for the buyers. Um, there was a little, there could have been a hiccup, uh, a oops on the buyer agent side, but thankfully everything worked out. I'm gonna share that at the end to make sure that this does not happen to you. Uh, but back to the reason why I'm recording this video, the husband, my um, seller client, is considering getting into real estate. He is tired of working for other people and he's thinking about getting into real estate and wants to ask him, you know, about it. And I sent him this channel and he just mentioned, he was like, you know, you have a lot of videos on this channel, but like, do you have it to where, okay, I'm thinking about getting real estate watch these videos in this order and I was like that is a good idea so 
I am going to uh, make a playlist like that. So that playlist will be available by the time this video goes up to assist people that are thinking about getting into business. Now, here's my answer. I believe the business of real estate is a great business to be in. I believe getting a real estate license is a, an asset. It is low cost compared to the amount of money that you can make in the business. Um, there's no there's no cap. There's no ceiling on what you can do. Um, there will. There, there, there is what you can do. You can't just go out here willy-nilly doing things wrong. But as far as what you can earn, how you can grow your business, if you want to have a team, if you want to be on brokerage, if you want to sell commercial, if you want to go sit on site, like there's so many avenues that you can go into real estate. So many, there's just so much opportunity in real estate. Uh, you can go into the investing side, investing you don't really don't need a license to go into the investing side but there's just so much so many things you can do within real estate that I think having a real estate license is a great asset whether you decide to do full-time or you decide to do it part-time um, it's it's still an asset an asset what is an asset it is still an asset no if you do do the business of real estate part-time do not treat it like a part-time business. You still need to treat it like a full-time business. Don't treat it like something you pick up every now and then because things change so much in real estate and your clients need to be treated with priority and their transactions need to be treated with priority and agents that work part-time and treat it like part-time. Uh, that's what gives uh, real estate agents a bad name, a bad rap because they don't, they don't handle it with professionalism. And like I said, part-time or full-time, even if you're like, I wanna have my real estate license for when I personally am going to buy and sell property and I plan to do that every couple of years or my family and friends, you wanna keep it at that level, it's gonna pay for itself. Your, your license, your renewal, things that you need being part of a board. Mind you, you, there are costs associated with having a real estate license, maintaining that license, and there is upkeep for you to get a license. So, now that we got all that out the way, you nailed it, bro. I do think it is a great thing, but I will be sure to tell you that it is not for everybody. It is work. Real estate, it, it is work. It is work. Um, having a steady flow of business, having a consistent income, it is work. Having a, and, and having a steady flow of business and consistent income are hand in hand. Um, that steady flow of business determines your income. So how, how do you make that happen? And that is the biggest thing in real estate and why you know agents some agents are they're good one month and they're bad down for three months uh they're they're on this roller coaster <laughs> income roller coaster i was there for several years i'm actually uh working on a book and it's gonna be out probably by the time that this uh, is posted and the link will be down below and I'll probably have an image right here and it talks about this very thing. In that book, I share what my income has been every year that I've been in real estate so you can really see. Like what I'm sharing with you is real, real. Like real, real. I know what it is like to be down here and I know what it is like to be up here. Girl, facts. All right, and I'm trying to share and give you tips and insight to help you avoid a lot of what I experience and get to here um, faster but nothing nonetheless it's going to require require work you have to treat it like a full-time job you, 
you might, you probably need to have even a better work ethic than you had on your full-time job because with a W-2 job, you know that paycheck is coming and it's coming regardless. It's coming consistently. You know at five o'clock, you can clock out even if you didn't put in all the effort that you needed to for the day. You don't have that comfort and that luxury when you are self-employed and, and when you're in real estate. Um, so those are the two sides. I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Uh, if you are thinking about getting your real estate license, uh, I will leave a link below for Aceable. That is a company that you can get your license with online. And one of the things that I've been looking into is I'm actually teaching licensing courses. If that is something that I decide to do and it's already up and running, I'll, I'll have that information down below. If you have any questions, um, any comments, leave them down below. If you want to connect with me, go ahead and schedule on my Calendly. And I forgot to mention, I am actually headed to go meet my bestie, which shout out to her she actually staged the property that i'm closing on um so we're like killing two birds with one stone here because we were already scheduled to have an accountability meeting this evening uh, but i was like hey do you, are you anywhere near buckhead and she wasn't so we're meeting on the other side on our side of town um but i'm like yeah, I'm grab a bite to eat and we can grab a bite and we can have our accountability meeting so we're gonna do that and we're also gonna celebrate because she staged a listing and a listing closed today so we have something else to celebrate oh I did tell you guys if you stay to the end of the video I would give you guys a bonus so with this transaction where this could have gone left for the buyers and I just told my sellers about this I do not worry or put things on my clients if I do not have to. They already have enough on their minds. Only if absolutely necessary. So let that be a tip to you. I think that's a sign of a really solid, strong agent. No, you don't get in the habit of keeping things from your, your um, clients, but you also don't run to them with every single thing until you until you're, you know or you're sure because they are instantly, put yourself in their shoes, they're instantly gonna go to kind of a worry, panic, oh gosh, what's next kind of thing. And, and if you can avoid that at, in, in, at any, any chance, any cost, uh, that, yeah, do that. So in this case, we had gotten past the due diligence period and Let's just say the due diligence ended on a Saturday. The due diligence ended on a Monday, right? The due diligence ended on a Monday, but we came to an agreement on the items on a Sunday. Nope, on a Saturday. We came to an agreement on the items on a Saturday. And on the amendment to address concerns, because that is the form that you fill out buyers, the buyer's agent fills out to ask the seller to address items. Th there's a box. It says, upon agreement, the due diligence period shall be terminated or shall not be terminated. The agent checked shall be terminated. So even though their inspection period terminated on Monday and today's Saturday, this agent was saying to me, if we come to an agreement, we are terminating this when we come to an agreement. It shall terminate this agreement, shall. If it said shall not, we could have came to agreement on Saturday, but the due diligence period would have still went to Monday. Keep that in mind. So we came to agreement Worked out everything on Saturday, done. Monday, I get a text message that says, hey, I tried to reach you. Um, I think we're gonna be able to work everything out. 
And I am just like thrown. I'm like, what the heck is he talking about? What's he talking about? Reading further into it, or come to find out, the night before, Sunday night, he sent me a termination. He emailed me a termination. Another note there. If you are going to send something like that, that is pressing, you should also confirm receipt. You should call and have a conversation. You should make sure that agent got it and is aware. So now Monday I get this text. I have no idea what he's talking about because he's, I did not check my, my um, email that night. And essentially he's saying that the people buying my seller's house, they're also selling a house and the buyers on their house, they have something that they need to work out and they should be able to work it out. But just in case he wants to protect his buyer's earnest money. So he went ahead and sent me a turn. So I am literally like, say what? Huh? Question marks? Like what is going on right here? Because as far as we all understood, everything was solid on Saturday when we came to an agreement. So much so the sellers had already started working on the inspection item stuff. So to get this, it's just like this came, I felt, um, I felt blindsided. This came out of left field. And also, there was no mention in the contract that the sellers, sorry, that the buyers had a home to sell. Their contract on my seller's property was not contingent upon them selling a home. It was not in the contract. That's another place. So the first oops is that he checked the shall. That was a oops. The second oops was that he did not make this contingent. He was, should have disclosed that. And I can see, I get why, I, mm, I was gonna say I can see why he did it with the market being so competitive. Some agents are like, all right, we're not gonna put it in there. We might not get, get our offer accepted. But he said he didn't include it because it wasn't on the pre-approval letter. And he felt like they could qualify for both houses. It wasn't contingent. And I, I get that, but some lenders are not putting it on the pre-approval letter because they know it will mess up their chances of getting it pre-approved. I'm at the point where I'm like, it's better to just go ahead and disclose and be on the safe side because if something comes up, it's gonna be a pickle. It's gonna be a pickle because they closed, the buyers closed on that house yesterday and then closed on my seller's house today. Some closings are happening to where they're closing on one house in the morning and closing on the next house in the afternoon. When things are coming down so close, you just wanna err on the side of caution and just make sure all parties are aware of what's happening. So I would say it's better to disclose. Um, thankfully, everything worked out. The buyers were able to work out the deal on the house that they were selling. The agent later told me, good guy, like good guy, has his own company, he's a broker. He said like he's never made that mistake before. He said he always checks, shall not terminate. He was just in haste, had a lot going on. I totally get that, totally understand that. He just happened to check, shall terminate. And that's something I said to him and I was like, but you do realize that you check shall on on the on the on the form, right? So even if y'all do terminate, I'm not getting back y'all earnest money. So that's when he was like, oh yeah, but yeah, I think we'll be good. But that's when it really set into him like, oh shucks. So those are the two. Those are the two bonuses. Wanted to share those stories so you you're aware and you know and you tuck those in your agent bag and you are mindful and you don't make those mistakes. All right, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I hope you got something for the video. I am headed to go meet with my bestie and accountability partner, meet, celebrate, and have our meeting. And yes, all of the links to anything I mentioned today will be down below. My book, check that out. Uh, CE course, not CE course, but 
licensing course and if I decide to go through and teach a licensing course that will also be down below if it's not there maybe coming in the future all right guys have a positive peaceful and productive day